Well, thank you so much and thank you for being in uh, the session. I wanted to know if I could potentially deviate a bit from, from the structure and maybe open up if there are any direct comments or questions that I can address um, immediately, that would be amazing. Um, as much as I'm coming into this particular space with um, certain experiences, I would like to also see if I could share the space with um, other participants and, and the audience and, and to just see what is coming out from, from whatever I said. Um, so thank you for being here. So if there are any, if there are any questions or anything that has sparked something, I mean, I invite anyone to unmute themselves and potentially say what needs to be said. So Izzy, I was drawn to your session. <clears throat> I really liked when you talked about the need to uh, translate what's going on to young people. Like that, that's part of what's necessary. And I was also uh, drawn to your uh, recognition of where the consequence of individualism is part of what we've gotten caught up in in this trajectory of Western scientific thought and the need to come back to uh, 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 connecting with all. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Margaret. Uh, if there's any other maybe questions, I could, I could respond. Um, if not, I'll, I'll just jump straight into it. Um, I'll say something. So, Oh, yes. Please go yes. ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Izzy. Uh, I'm, I'm here today because as, a, uh, as an elder, as a former young spiritual activist, that was years ago, <clears throat> I'm grateful for this platform and I'm grateful that there are young folks <clears throat> from different parts of the globe that are wanting to make a difference. That's, that's where I started in my youth, that's where I'm, and that's where I'm at in my elderhood. So thank you for representing. Thank you for carrying the torch. Blessings. No, thank you so much. Um, so if I, I'll just take those and then I'll jump straight into it. And if there's anything else that pops up, by all means, we'll share the space. Um, just in terms of that, and also just be in, in the most uh, the latter comment um, and being in this particular space. It's not by accident. Well, it somewhat is by accident that I find myself <laughs> in social justice spaces or even into religious dialogue spaces. So a bit about me, I grew up in a culturally Islamic or Muslim household. Um, and that also comes with a certain way of being. And I think it was 2009 and Operation Cast Lead had occurred. And this was uh, the war between Gaza and Israel. And I was brought into a conflict. Now I've known about this for a while, but I think there was an emotional aspect or component to that that drew me to wanting to know. Fast forward a year later, I find myself at the University of Cape Town studying Hebrew, being the only Muslim person to be in a class studying Hebrew. Both my lecturers were Israeli. Um, and this was one way of me finding out about the other. Um, I did not know it was going to take me to, um, into religious dialogue. I did not know that it was going to force me into spaces to really think about the other and to essentially care for the other. And so making a difference, and, and I thank you for that, making a difference I think just came with it. I mean, before almost every class, Hebrew class, we would have, the class would sit together outside and there was um, a Baha'i, uh, a Reform Jew, an Orthodox Jew, I was the Muslim. Um, we had a missionary Christian, she was, she was quite specific, she was a missionary. Um, and we f these five, you know, religious representatives were sitting around and discussing life. And I think through doing that for about five years, you get to humanize the other. And I think this speaks to this whole idea of individualism, or at least for me, the fact that I, I grew up in a society and, and I, I'm from Cape Town, I'm a part of a minority grouping in Cape Town. Uh, Muslims came here about 300 years ago and we still are here. Um, and it was interesting to see the way our society had developed. It was interesting to see how we could talk about community but our actions didn't speak that. 
Um, and that for me was a bit concerning because also South Africa comes from a particular background where one community was being privileged over another. And even being a person of color and having received, being on the receiving side of oppression, there's another conversation that needs to happen or that needs to, 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 yeah, to happen. And it's how do we actually connect and humanize not only within, with, amongst peoples who are oppressed, but also the oppressors. Because these are humans at the end of the day. These are souls at the end of the day. And as much as, as that violence and trauma um, exists with those on the receiving end, we tend to forget that that, ex that same violence and trauma exists on those who are exerting that force. And so there was this need to come together, at least from my perspective, to come together. And this you know, was on the front of religion, was on the front of race, was on the front of gender justice. Um, and, it, and it was, at its core, we were needing to attack this idea of individualism. We we're needing to attack this idea of, of everyone for themselves. Because essentially, we're all in the same boat, right? And if there are waves, strong waves, we will all feel it. We might not be as, um, as secure as, uh, as others, or we might be even more secure than others on that boat, but we will all feel it. And it also just speaks to do trying to understand this world. And I tell you, uh, I, I started studying Hebrew in 2011. That was my first year at university. And it was definitely a process in changing the way I thought about myself as an individual, but also my relations to others, whoever they were. And that was a really deep journey that I think I'm still on, but I found my way. But it was also a journey where I needed to expose myself and to make myself vulnerable to particular ways of thinking that I think either my family or my extended family or my community are not ready for. Um, and that's really helped me, that inner journey has really helped me because I also teach Arabic um, to 16 year, 15 year olds, 16 year olds. And as much as I teach a language and, and I'm a linguist and so I speak Hebrew, I speak Arabic and I teach those languages as well, um, as much as I, I, I teach the language, I would like to believe that I try to teach life. Um, not that I know everything about it, but I try to give over my experiences to younger peoples so that they don't have to face the same obstacles that I've, that I've faced and I've struggled with. Or maybe if they are facing those struggles, I could give them a helping hand. Um, and I think I draw this on my Hebrew-Israeli lecturer. As much, as much as she taught us Hebrew, she also taught us how to be, how to love, how to look at texts, whether it's the Old Testament, New Testament, and appreciate that, whether it was to, to look at religion as a system and, how, you know, and really think about how does the system function within our society, to make a distinction between the system that is religion and the gooiness that is spirituality. And I've received that from the most unlikely of teachers, this Israeli, you know, a woman a lecturer who's Israeli and on top of it, a rabbi, a reformed rabbi, teaching a Muslim person how to be. And for me to go to my own peoples and to teach them, younger peoples, how to be. And when I do that, I, I help them make sense of the world because I know it can be a daunting task trying to make sense of what Trump is doing and what Trump is saying, or making sense of what's happening in South America, or even in our own country. Racial tensions are on the rise because of the socioeconomic um, levels and, and how race is associated and, and linked to that socioeconomic factor. And for us to make sense of that and to be more conscious of who we're working with, who we're living with, and how we are loving them. 
and that process has been an interesting one. And, and obviously this is, a, and I'll end here and I'll just open it up if anyone wants to say anything um, um, and then potentially continue afterwards depending on time. Um, but to say that it's a process um, and it's something that I can't claim because definitely like um, Mr. Marshall had said, um, there were peoples before me who had gone through these same processes, these same similar experiences. And we draw on those energies, we draw on those experiences, but we're needing to you know, change it here and there so that it's, it's, it's applicable to a younger generation. Sometimes I don't even stand, I, I don't even understand what 16 year olds are going through. But you know, <laughs> we, we try to make it work for them. <laughs> I'll just pause there if there's any responses or any questions. Um, I'll just say we have eight minutes, um, eight minutes left total. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Nope. No responses just yet. I do. Oh, I, I had a thought. But Go ahead. Yes. Um, what, what you're talking about, what I hear you're talking about, the word that comes to my mind is humility <clears throat> and humility. And uh, when I'm willing to have the humility to, and I, I appreciate your, I appreciate your sharing about the other. <clears throat> That's so important. It's always been important. It's still important. It'll always be important. <clears throat> uh, and but the humility is to, when I'm talking to the other, how can I, because I can't really know their experience. I can't know your experience. I didn't grow up in South Africa. I, I grew up in, in the US, mostly in the Midwest. <clears throat> but where can I find the similarity? And where can I, ha can I have the humility to find the similarities and not get caught up in the differences? And that's, a lot, that's a lot of work right there. And that's, that's what you're describing. I love your piece about working with the rabbi. Like you're talking to the other and you're like, and, and you have no context context you had no context you were just learning on your feet <clears throat> and, and it's a lot to it's a lot, it was a lot to take in so that's that's what i want to share that the humility to see the other as they are where they are and if that can happen on both sides or with, with two others let's say <laughs> or more there that's where a lot of hope is there thank you no, thank you so much for that. Um, I think, again, a part of the process as well was to, how do I say this? To note, to acknowledge quite harshly that I don't know full stuff. I, I don't know. I can, I can be a part of a tradition that has existed for 1,400 years. I tell you this, that I've just had certain, you know, a number of conversations with Hindus, with Jews, with Christians, and I've learned. I mean, I think I know as, as a Muslim, I would think I know everything. God has given me the answers. I know how to engage with the world. Full stop. I have it. You know, khalas, we move on. But when you actually take time to sit down with someone and you, you listen without wanting to interject. You listen without wanting to give your input. And you, you don't, you, if I can describe it like this, you, you try to feel where they're coming from, not to see where they come from. When you feel where they're coming from, I think that's at heart engagement. That's at heart communication, which I, I tell you this again, that it's impacted me in how I now engage with others. Noting in this particular grouping, there are experiences here that you know, I will learn from, which is why I didn't want to do a, let me tell you everything, because I don't know everything. I can only tell you what I've experienced. And maybe if we all had that, you know, that heart ear, the, the, the listening of the heart to everyone else's experiences, maybe <laughs> we'll be able to get out of this alive. <laughs> But I think just one last thing was that I've been contemplating this idea of healing um, on many levels. And 
it's been something that I've, I've really been trying to engage with and trying to explore. And I've looked in my own tradition and it only go and I, and I acknowledge it only goes so far. And when I experience and I listen and I humble myself before other traditions, it complements what I know. It encourages my, the push forward to what I'm, where I'm wanting to get at. And it's me acknowledging that without getting into this unity of all religion, because definitely all, you know, religions are diverse and different in their own ways and need to be act, acknowledged as that, is that they, they speak to this, 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 this way of being that I think is universal. Lastly, what I wanted to say, I was on an, on an interfaith camp and um, we had, amongst the facilitators, we had Muslims, Jews, Christians, and Hindus, and atheists. And we had uh, about 40 students who were of diverse backgrounds. And I was speaking to a, fr a friend of mine, Thomas, from the US. And he was Christian, and he was a part of a missionary grouping. And I said, you identify as a missionary. How do you find yourself in interfaith or interreligious dialogue spaces? And he had said, I always think of it like this. If you walk into a church and you see the stained glass, you'll see the sun shining through those stained glasses um, on, you know, on the floor and you'll see the different colors. But you, if you step outside of the church, you'll be able to acknowledge that source and see where that light actually comes from and how that light is essentially one but those different stained glasses, just the way we interpret what that light is. And coming from a missionary Christian, you know, background person, friend, it's like, oh, snap. I never thought of it like that. And so it's opening up to the learnings of other peoples, of other ways, not necessarily abandoning what, what I was born into, but seeing how is this world, how are these other traditions faith complementing what I'm, I know, what I do. Um, I'll pause there, I'm just thinking, oh, we have time. Do you have any other questions or concerns? I'm hoping that was <laughs> adequate to <laughs> response. That was beautifully said. I. Um feel much the same way. I'm very involved in interfaith um, groups and, and I love to travel and, and meet people um, in different countries and, and I love that metaphor of the church windows. It's, a, it's great. It's really lovely. Thank you. And you're doing wonderful work. Thank you. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I mean, I think the spaces that I find myself in and the peoples that I meet, it forces me out of my comfort zone, which is a wonderful thing. Absolutely. Um, and I think that I don't take for granted at all. Even when I went to Israel um, and you know, visited Israel and Palestine, I, there was a lot of pushback. As much as there was pushback, I knew it was a journey that needed to be done. I knew it was something that I needed to accomplish myself as a being, as a soul. So we could hear the dogs in the background. I'm so sorry. Um, because it, it's, it's evolved my thinking, I think. It's evolved the way I think about myself in relation to others as well. And it's that humanizing aspect that I think is something that I take to heart. I'm seeing we have about 30 seconds <laughs> left. I want to just thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, I'm sure they'll send details. I mean, if there are any questions or any like responses, I would love to hear from you, but thank you so much to all who's been a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.